Hello and welcome guys, this is Wade, and in this video I'm going to be explaining to you guys the grammar part, but the one which we are going to be implementing in the code. So first of all, I'm just going to be like, I'm, I'm going to show you what we've made before, just to get you guys freshened up. So let's say you enter a string, right? It's going to say you entered a string, you enter a number, it's going to say you entered a number, and if you enter something else, it's just going to say other input. Now the thing about this is that when you make something like this, you gotta have a grammar defined for it. So, and these are the tokens which we did before. I have explained them in the previous video. So, these are the tokens which we need. So, there's a string, there's a number, other, and a semicolon. And I'm gonna be explaining to you guys why the semicolon is important. So, let's start. So, let's say you enter a string, right? So, it's gonna go ahead and say that's a string. So, what exactly is this? It's a string, right? It's a string but there's a semicolon so it's a string and a semicolon it's two tokens that's pretty awesome let's go forward you entered 85 so an 85 is of course a number and a semicolon that's good and uh, there's gonna be this right that's other and it's a semicolon so that's pretty much it now the thing about this is you, you gotta find a pattern in this thing you gotta find like the pattern which you could use to tell the compiler that you know what these are the kind of inputs you're gonna get so if you just go ahead and say you know what computer there's gonna be three of these there's gonna be three kinds of inputs and these are the kind of inputs that are gonna be in the program right the computer is gonna be a little bit um, well I'm gonna say crash because at this point there's three kinds of input but the computer wants one single thing which explains everything just one so what you do is like you make another smart move here and you can say you know what statement statements another token I'm gonna make and what are these well they're just basically statements right and in this case I'm gonna call these three out because let's look at it the pattern is there's something then there's a semicolon something semicolon and the same thing here so what you're gonna do is just you can you can like make these things vanish let's do that so Basically, a statement could be a string, or a number, or it could be other. So, basically, a statement could be a string, number, or other. So you can just go ahead and oh, oops, that's bad. You can just go ahead and replace it, and booyah, that works. That's pretty awesome, right? You can just now go ahead and tell the, the computer. You know what, computer? The kinds of input you're going to be expecting are going to be a statement and a semicolon so you can you can go ahead and say wait and uh, semicolon at the end and the computer's gonna be like wait is that a statement it's gonna go in statements and check it's a string and is it a string yep that's good it's gonna do the same thing for this it's gonna check hey let's see if it's a statement it's gonna go in statement is it a string nah is it a number yup there we go same thing for this it's gonna go all the way in and check other it's gonna be like yeah that's a statement and is there a semicolon at the end yep there is so this thing stays true so that's pretty perfect, right? But wait, there's another problem. Let's see that. So let's say you enter the string, right? And you've given the compiler, the computer, the input pattern like this. So it's gonna go ahead and check the, the statement. That's a string, yeah, that's perfect. Is there a semicolon? Oh, there is one. That's awesome, but wait. It, it's gonna get it's, it's gonna stop there because let's look at it is there anything ahead of this no there's not so the computer is now gonna look for a statement and a semicolon and it's gonna stop so even if you enter like anything here it's not gonna check it because it's gonna be like you know what that's the only thing I was gonna be uh, checking for and that is here that's I'm done I'm not gonna go forward so we got to do another smart move and say you know what I'm essentially going to be putting a lot of statements here, so let's say, yep, that's one. Yep, that's a lot of garbage, by the way. So, you know what, that's a lot of statements, and the, the input's going to be like this. But we do not know, we have no clue how many these are going to be. But the only thing we do know is not, it's like that, it's not, it's going to be one or many and that's that's it like that's the only thing we know that's it's gonna be like a lot of them one of them two of them we don't know so we're gonna make one more smart move and we're gonna do, let me get the simple it yep what you're gonna do is you're gonna make one more token and you're gonna say you know what 
I'm going to have a lot of statements and uh, you're going to tell the compiler hey it's not going to be a statement and a semicolon it's going to be statements it's going to be a lot of statements and the compiler is going to be okay that's good but you know what I don't know what statements are so you're going to go ahead and say hey a statement is a statement uh, statements are you you got to have a statement and a semicolon at the end but then again the computer is going to be like yeah that's pretty good but I'm just going to take the first one right because there's, I'm going to find for we're going to find this I'm going to go ahead and see what it means that it's going to mean a statement and a semicolon so there's a statement and a semicolon and I'm done done for the day there's nothing ahead I need to do so you're going to go ahead and say hey you know what that's not the end there's going to be more statements after this did you check what I just said I did not add an or there's no or here it's like in this case it's either this this or this it's not all three of them at the same time it could be this or this or this in this case it's got to be three followed by one another it's got to be this then followed by this and then followed by this it's got to be this complete statement so in this case the computer is going to be like, hey that's good because now I can go uh, when I see this statements I'm going to go inside I'm going to see if there's a statement involved there is one is there a semicolon there's one as well and it says statement so I'm just going to go ahead and check if what statements mean and then again there's going to be a statement semicolon and statements means there's going to be another statement semicolon statement semicolon and it's going to go all the way down here and it's going to go crazy because it's going to be like hey you told me there's going to be statement statements here but there's nothing here it's, it's ending you, you told me there's going to be some sort of statements and hey there's nothing here I cannot go forward but you do one more smart move you're going to say hey you know what statements can be a statement followed by a semicolon or, and followed by another series of statements or it could just be empty this right here it means empty it's like nothing there it could be empty and that's important that's a super important step because this thing is called uh, if you guys are learning any kinds of um, programming classes like computer science classes there's going to be something called epsilon yeah that's what they're talking about that those professors those not those are not crazy they're talking about this so in this case it's going to be empty and now you can do that stuff because when it goes all the way down here it's going to check for statement a semicolon at the end both of that and it's going to check if there's a statements again and what is a statements thing so a statements means that it's either going to be empty or this and is it empty yep it is that means you are now completely done with the grammar so this itself completely explains what kind of grammar we are using and this is the table the computer can use to traverse through all this um, uh, all these tokens we've just made so that's pretty much the one we've made for this Y code and as you can see so when the program starts this is the first one by the way and the uh, bison code wants this to be in the beginning and it just the first one out here you can name it anything but when it's the first one it knows that's the uh, that's the one it should follow and it's a common practice to name it prog because that's how the, pro the program runs so in this case I'm just gonna say you know what there's gonna be like a lot of statements inside and then it goes down it says okay the statements are either empty or it could be a statement followed by a semicolon and then followed by another set or series of statements following that I'm gonna explain what statement are just the way I did in this I've explained how a statement could be this this or this and the same thing is gonna happen pretty much here so if it's a string if it's a number or it's another one now if it's a string you can just say hey you entered a string and it's gonna go ahead and print the string oh, there's an error here let me change it yep so it's gonna go ahead and print the string same thing is gonna happen here it's gonna say hey the number you entered is this and it's gonna print the number uh, as an integer for other you're not doing anything here because if you do remember we had a code down there so if it's other which is a wildcard dot it's gonna send uh, and uh, it's gonna call this function show error and show error is gonna like print this other input so that's pretty much for the program and now the important part here is the bison code uh, things so let's let's check what's important so if you look at this there's an s and that that means it's got to be a string right but 
there's this fancy looking thing here. So what is it? Well, basically, we are printing this. This is a token, and it is considered as a data type. And you can this is like the bottom, the most, the the, the token at the most bottom level. So it's going to have some sort of type. So when it's got a type, you can just print it. And this dollar one represents the number or the uh, the um, the rank at which this is. So let's say there's going to be another number here, another string. So this this is not exactly how it, the program works, but let's let's just say for the sake of explaining you guys, there's going to be one thing, one statement, which is going to have like a number, string, string number, whatever that is. So in this case, this is dollar one, this dollar two, and this dollar three. So if I want to print the number, I'm just going to say dollar two. And if I want to, let's say there's going to be a, b, c, d, whatever. So I want to pr print d. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So this, wait, is that right? Yep, that's right. So D is the sixth one, right? So I'm just going to say dollar six, and whatever type this D has, that's going to be printed. Now about the types. So if you guys do remember what I made before, so in this case I gave types to these uh, tokens. So a string type is essentially a name, and a name is a character buffer. So in this case we know that this. Uh, let me change it to one again. So it's a string, right? and a string is basically just a name and a name is a character buffer so we're going to print it as a character buffer and the number of course is a number which is an integer so when we print it we're going to print it as an integer as person d or person i whatever you use and it is still going to be dollar one because it's the first one in this case if there were a whatever so i want to print bg right so that's the third one so i'm just going to say three so that's pretty much for the Y code, and um, there. V, uh, yeah. So importantly, you gotta have YY parse. That's 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 call is important for the uh, the compiler and the directives to know that what exactly is gonna go down using the Bison uh, libraries. So that's important. And this is uh, one of these functions you could use if there's an error. You can use this function, uh, and it's gonna get called if there's an error internally. So that's one of those functions. So that's pretty much for the bison code and the grammar part uh, yeah I think we're done with this video so if you guys have like any question or stuff regarding this video or the ones before you can just drop them down in the comments and rest assured all the and the entire code I've used it's on github it's completely good you can just go ahead and download it or even better would be just if you go and fork it on your account so you can use it from there or you could just start it so you can use it for later on so GitHub's a pretty awesome place go there and check out the code and um, yep, that's pretty much it. So if you got any like, questions and stuff, drop them down in the comments. And thanks for watching.